Sanyo was a very good company that welcomed me and the managers were so amazing. They taught me a lot about life. So because I wasn't really getting some good money, though I was doing a lot of job, I had to move to UAE, where I am now. I moved to UAE in 2017, um, June, and joined as a security guard under a JADA property management, where I worked for two months and I was moved to become a con security concierge, customer service. I worked uh, for, I think, six months. Then I was moved to become a supervisor, security supervisor. So in Ijad, I worked for 18 months. And because of my commitment to it, my job and my dedication to what health and safety um, on site in city work where I was working, I was so observant, I was so curious about safety. Um, one of the facility management company approached me and asked me if I have a CV for myself and I gave it to them and they called me for an interview for health and safety inspector. And definitely because of the skills that I've acquired, I nailed the interview and was given the job as a HSC inspector where I joined Coffee B6 from City Work. I worked with Coffee B6 from City Work uh, in the whole of UAE, actually, I could say Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Sharjah, Russia, Kema, Fujera, mm, name them. I moved in all the projects, big project. I handled in um, HCT, Dubai, HCT, Abu Dhabi, HCT, um, Fujera. <laughs> HCT, um, Russell Kema, I manage um, Rakesh, I manage um, Master City, I manage um, um, Standard Chartered Bank, uh, Central Park, City Walk, um, Dewa Accommodation, Lake Fountain near the famous Dubai Lake uh, Burj Khalifa, the Lake Fountain that around uh, Dubai. Uh, Burj Khalifa, that water that run around, we manage them and also I'm managing, I manage that too. I also manage um, Dubai Hills, I manage Dubai Trams, I manage uh, lots and lots, UAE Space Center, I manage um, <laughs> Space Center in Abu Dhabi. So many um, big projects that I've handled, and it has given me a vast, vast experience. And the biggest now is Dubai Airport, where I'm handling Dubai Airport um, for energy conservation and uh, project. And we are inside the heart of Dubai Airport where I work. And right now I'm recording from Dubai Airport where I am now. So yeah, you can imagine. It wasn't that uh, easy to get to where I am. During the course of my stay in UAE, I decided to invest in myself. I went on and did Nibosh at IGC. Um, after IGC, I went on and did um, my Intertech ISO um, um, Leads Auditor. Um, awareness. I went on and did my um, international diploma in occupational health and safety. And yeah, still going on. I'm planning to do health and safety, food safety. I'm planning to do um, my certified lead, internal lead auditor. I'm planning to do um, aviation safety. So all these, I want to achieve them before I grow old. What did I learn from UAE? I learned that persevering is all about knowing where you come from, where you're going. Persevering is when you know what is behind. The same force will make you to know what to, to handle what is ahead of you. I worked in my company for now six years almost. I 
haven't been promoted for once. But yes, I've raised, I've got some increment in my salary. I've done so many good, impressive good job, and I've got appreciated. I was given big bonuses and so on and so forth. Yes, and I'm not complaining about that because, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Angie has been a turning, a stepping stone in my life. So I did all that I can from Angie. I even got my, <coughs> sorry, I got my license from Angie. Um, yes, I'm who I am from Angie. I've supported so many people back home, my family. I've done some little bit of transformation in the lives of some few who recognize that. And yeah, I'm still pushing and I'm still in Angie. And I appreciate them for giving me the opportunity to work with them. Otherwise, there is nothing I need more than doing my job. The thing is that for you to be perfect in your job, accept to be told the wrong thing that you've done and agree to change them. Because nobody hates you for not doing the right thing. People hate you for doing the wrong thing when you're told to do the wrong thing. Okay? What I've learned is that mistakes are human and it's only a person who accepts his mistakes. Is the only person who can change the mistakes and become a better person. As I speak now, my skills and experience and the exposure I've got from my company, with the training and the skills, up skills that I've got, I can be able to handle any project. And yeah, I know Uganda would want you to to hold a degree in engineering or a diploma in engineering so that you can become a health and safety officer of a project. For example, in Talo, for example, in Sinok, for example, in, in uh, IRA, for example, in ESCOM, for example, in um, oil, uh, oil Authority of Uganda. But in UAE, you train for a specific purpose, health and safety. An engineer is supposed to do the job of engineer. A safety personnel is supposed to handle the safety of the people. And I'm surprised that Uganda be looking at equipping engineers who already has a professions and making them part of health and safety. The question is how are they going to separate the two tasks? Because the same person who might compromise the health and safety for doing his job is the same person who is the health and safety officer. And here it is, the fairness is that the same person who is not the engineer is the one going to look after this project and make sure the engineer does his job safely and ensure that the equipment or the system that the engineer is working in is safe. So my message to Uganda is that you need to think twice, right? You need to think twice when it comes to safety. We cannot mix health and safety with engineering. I know you have a big thinking that if you are an engineer, you know the, 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 the system, you are able to understand the, 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 the caution and this, the technical thing about it. But when it comes to health and safety, it's all two different things. You have the technical skills, he has the theoretical part of it, and he understands the risk, he understands, he knows the mitigations, and he can implement it well than the person who is technically equipped with the skills of engineering. And that is why the implementation of HSC in my country, Uganda, is still very low. So I urge and I call upon um, <clears throat> the safety personnel of Uganda to make sure you fight to have HSC recognized. And in that case, all the authorities, all the entities dealing in constructions, dealing in maintenance, 
and dealing in um, regulations must have a department for health and safety. In this case, we are able to understand the risk in every activities, come up with the mitigations, and then we are able to implement health and safety appropriately. Remember, because you're trying to mix the engineering sections into the health and safety, and then when you go to the class of health and safety, it has nothing to do with engineers. It has nothing to do with the technical things to do with um, what we call engineering sections. All they are teaching you is the risk, mitigations, and detections, and awareness, and making sure safety procedures, safe, safe system of work, the, 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 the standards, ISO standards are maintained, the quality of the job is perfectly kept. These are the main, main focus when it comes to safety. But whereas when you come to the engineering, we are looking at the system, we are looking at the equipment, we are looking how to disassemble them, how to assemble them, how to fix them, all has nothing to do with safety. So until we understand that, KCCA, UNRWA, ESCOM, TALO, TOTAL, SINOC, Petroleum Authority of Uganda, we will never reach the bottom. It is even worse that we've changed health and safety in Uganda to be for the army. Okay, yes, army and soldiers and police can be part of health and safety. Why? Because they provide the security on the ground for the safety of the people who are doing the job. But then they cannot be head of health and safety. Why? Because the health and safety department covers the standards, right? We have a standard that covers health and safety. ISO 45001 for health and safety, uh, 9001 for quality, 14001 uh, for environment, and we have the 5001 for the energy, we have a food safety standard, we have um, a production standard. So all these standards doesn't have anything to do with the guns, doesn't have anything to do with the engineering process, doesn't have anything to do with uh, uh, technical background. It is only an implementation of those standards and then making sure they are auditable because all of them end with one, 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 one. And making sure that the IMS system is in place to prove whatever it is that you're doing on site. So we need to change that from Uganda's perspective. We need to have the health and safety um, practitioners recognize and they should be part of each and every big authorities in the country. I would say that um, the only way we are getting trouble in Uganda where the buildings are collapsing, people are doing the work and safely serious accidents are happening at the workplaces. In the transport system we do not have control over the accidents because we don't have the health and safety of our practitioners. We do not have the health and safety departments. Because through inspection is the only time you can understand there is a risk, there is a danger, there is a problem, there is something to be done. And you inspect based on the standard that you have. Quality, health and safety, environment, energy, which we have it all in Uganda. So my appeal to you is let KCC have the health and safety department, let UNRWA has the health and safety department, let um, ESCOM have the health and safety department, let um, Sino, Total, Talo, um, Petroleum Authority, um, Umeme, all these national water must have a health and safety department and must conduct audit in relationship with operations, productions, and health and safety, so that you can have your certification on your wall. 
I spoke about this so long and it took me so long to think about this in that aspect. Otherwise, we are going to be keeping ourselves in the dark and we'll keep losing people, we'll keep getting multiple injuries, we'll keep spending a lot of money on the hospital bills, yet we could mitigate all this before it happened. I say this for good and my country. My name is Haika Boskonyeko. I'm working here in UAE and in Dubai specifically. Currently, right now, I'm in airport, Dubai airport. That's where I'm working. But then I do have uh, multiple projects outside. I handle Diwa, I handle um, RTA, I handle um, Space Center, I handle Dubai Hills Estates. I handle um, Emirates Aviation University, I handle CAE, I handle Unines, I handle uh, Tram, I handle so many of them. So let's wake up as a country, let's wake up and recognize the difference between the two. Imagine back home, I'm a social worker. Back home, I'm a PR, public relation practitioner. But here, I'm a health and safety specialist. And just give me a whirl.